Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about DC Comics. We're going to talk about DC Comics and that Webtoon situation. Oh, yeah. Because uh, now that the Webtoon's been out there for like, I think it's been about a week. Well, imagine this. They put out a free webcomic. Done in a different art style. Done in a more manga-esque style. And currently, more people are reading this free manga-style DC comic than are buying Batman comics. Oh, I'm not surprised at all. Are you shocked? No, not at all. Are you shocked? I'm not shocked either. Uh, so I got to give a hat tip to Dan here who, who sent this link over uh, from Comic Book Resources. We're going to talk about this because this might not actually be a good thing for DC Comics because I, I have to wonder if Warner Discovery after the merger is going to look at this and be like, look at these numbers versus these numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, and if we're not making money on the comics anyway, why don't we just do free comics and just make movies and TV shows? Yeah, I shows? mean, because, yeah, I mean, that's making some money somewhere. I don't know if it's supposed to add revenue or what, but people are all, they're like boasting the numbers on the free. Yeah, so, I, well, I guess, I guess with Webtoon, you can buy chapters ahead. Uh, but I don't think a lot of people are going to do that. No. Let's be honest. And we'll, oh, we'll, that what they're doing now? You buy chapters? Yeah, okay. we'll we'll talk about that. Maybe you can unlock the, the dirty stuff. Hot Robin on Robin action. I doubt they're going to go there. Um, oh, it's Webtoon. They might. Who knows? Batgirl on Batgirl action? Which Robin? Because they're all Robin. All of them. <laughs> One giant. Never mind. Robin's Nest, now on Webtoon. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe. For more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys, we're over 235,000 subs. Yeah, see, what would I do without the woohoo? What, what do you do when I'm not here? I, I I just say I'm not here with geeky sparkles, and, and then everybody just shuts me off. And you don't do, do woohoo on your own? I don't woohoo. Oh, that's no. what's wrong with you. You should wrong. get a, recorded, a recording little button so you can push it, and it goes me go woohoo. <laughs> geeky bot. Woohoo. Woohoo. <laughs> woohoo. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so thanks again, Dan, for, for sending this over. Totally missed it. Uh, this does not surprise us at all as people nope. who did free web comics for a number of people years. People like free. Uh, you know, we used to get over a million views a month mm -hmm. on our web comic. And, you know, statistically, very few people bought the comic books. Yeah, that's why we stopped doing it for free. Yeah, because the ad revenue, ad blockers got introduced and it got harder and harder to make money on it. And what happened was... The people who who read the comic for free became the most entitled, demanding. Not all of them. A nasty, small percentage of the people that read the comic. Vocal for minority free. of people. Yeah, I'm who, not gonna say it's everybody because that wasn't. True. No, 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 no. But we had people that were just like, "Where's my free comic? I don't Where's care if someone in your family died. You need to buy from me comic." Literally, that happened on mm -hmm. multiple occasions. Uh, yeah. Not that someone died, but yeah. Well, it no, at we least did. Once. We did. We had we had a couple deaths in the family, mm -hmm. and people were like, you know, we had major life events come up, and we got sick, whatever. We got sick, and it's like, no, you were you were keeping them from getting more free comics, and mm -hmm. they got very very angry. We um, got very very salty, and we got very salty. So I anyway. got I got pretty bitter. I, I admit, it. I, I got did. very very bitter about it because I'm like. We got things going on in the real world, and all you want are free comics. And, that's, mm -hmm. that's and the nice. hours just for one page. Oh, God, yeah. So anyway, anyway go back to the point. Please. Back to the point here. So, yes, DC Comics putting out free comics, free Batman comics, uh, done in a manga style. And, yes, of course, more people are going to view these than are going to purchase Batman comics mm -hmm. from the direct market. I mean, it's Shocker. Just, but... Are they going to make money on it? That's that, the who knows. I mean, if it's, if it's just by buying a chapter ahead, they might. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so coming from CBR, Webtoons Wayne Family Adventures readership surpasses DC's Batman comics, and Batman is actually their flagship title. That's bad. I'm sorry. That's not good. We're going to talk about that because this actually might backfire on DC. Mm. They might have been looking at this like, yeah, we're going to boost our numbers, and then we're going to go over here to uh, Warner Discovery. Warner Brothers Discovery, and we're going to tell them, hey, comics are worth keeping around because look at these numbers. Look at, we give comics away and look how many people yeah, read them. They'll be like, for free and then everybody wants them. And they'll be like, yeah, hey, that's kind of a problem, isn't it? Uh, the free comics are doing better. So they're running into the webcomic business model problems? They are running, yes. Uh, now that, that DC and Archie and uh, Marvel are going to chase after the webcomic business model they're going to run into the same problems uh, mm -hmm. that web comics creators run into but they're bankrolled by a multi-billion dollar conglomerate so yeah it's not going to hurt as much 
Uh, so anyway, yeah, the subscriber count has surpassed the monthly sales for Batman's <laughs> monthly series. Not to, that wouldn't have taken long. I mean, let's be honest. No, it wasn't got because we're talking a good month, a hundred thousand copies. And, and you get, I mean, a new comic that is popular or has based on something, it'll get that like in a week, easy on webtoons. Easy. Oh yeah. Wow, it got it's better than I thought. Uh, heavily features Batman's supporting cast and explores the relationships between the Robins, no, Gotham's vigilantes. Series launched with three episodes on September 8th and has since gained over 500,000 subs. Now, here's the thing about Webtoon. When they have a big uh, cartoon like this launch, mm -hmm. a big Webtoon like this launch, they literally send notifications out to everybody who has the app installed. That's true. So the, so people would come in and then they'd be one of their darlings and suddenly they have all these subscribers because they immediately pr promoted them, put them at the top of the page, do all kinds of advertising for them right off the bat. So that's not surprising. Right, either. plus the media push and all that. So this, this does not surprise me at all. Uh, I never thought, especially looking at it and looking at the art style and stuff, I'm like, this is not gonna fail. I mean, it might fail to make money, but it's not gonna fail to, to get readers. Um, so anyway, yeah, they said, uh, 500,000 subscribers, uh, the most recent monthly reports for Batman, Detective Comics and Batman Urban Legends show those books selling roughly 125,000, 53,000 and 44,000. That's bad. Wow. That's really bad. Detective Comics is only selling 53,000. Mm -hmm, apparently. The last time a Batman title sold over 500,000 units was in 2019 when they had Detective Comics 1000, which was a big milestone mm -hmm. issue. Despite how those numbers may look on the surface, the growth of the digital market has not stopped print comics from growing. <coughs> Bullshit. <coughs> oh, sorry. I thought I might <laughs> Many creators have decided to create digital first comics through Substack. Yes, again, being bankrolled by venture capital. Look, the, these publishers, DC and Archie and whoever else is jumping on this bandwagon, they're going to figure out things that we figured out like 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. That you can have a massive audience and still be broke, mm -hmm. you know. And a lot of web comics creators figure this out, unfortunately. Uh, you know, and how it worked was originally it was like you did like a proto Patreon where people would you know donate to get your stuff quicker, or they would get digital perks and stuff like that, or they would wait and buy a print compilation. But statistically, the number of people who bought bought print compilations of web comics was very very low in comparison to the number of people that read the books. And then even beyond that, which they bring up in here, that when they go by comic sales numbers, you have to remember they're rolling in manga. And manga kicked all their asses. Yeah. So you have web comic sales, which, well, it's only 160 million the total of the digital market was digital comics out of the 1.2 billion. Mm. And the 1.2 billion rolls in manga. Yeah. So... Yeah. So it's not, this isn't really... It's no. All, so it's like, everybody's jumping ship for digital, but things are fine, guys. It's like, oh, digital still didn't come anywhere near the comic print versions that we are, we're going to mention in passing that some of them were record-breaking for manga, but we're not going to actually break it down for you because you'll shit yourself. Yeah, manga sales continue to, to reach record-breaking heights. Uh, yeah, and again, done in a manga style. This okay, so the breakdown of your $1.2 billion that way. Yep. Um, the success of Batman Wayne Family Adventures is good news for comic book fans. Last month, DC announced a partnership with Webtoon that will see the publisher's catalog of heroes brought over to the service with over 72 million active users. And again, ever um, right, they all got push notifications. Active that this users, was, right? Yeah. And so they got, but they have 72 million active users and like 500,000 subscribers. And Webtoon's offers DC an opportunity to expose new readers to their heroes and stories. Great. And and you're giving it for free. And it's the same audience that, again, you know... They're not going to buy the books. They're not going to buy comics. Um, and that might not be the goal. The goal might not be to buy comics. The goal might just be to keep the IP out there so they buy T-shirts and backpacks and figurines and uh, video games mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. You know, it might because be, they're not going to buy the books. They're probably not going to buy the books. Or, or very few of them. You're not going to sell 500,000 copies of uh, a print version of, of Wayne Family Adventures. Mm -mm. I, I can almost guarantee it. It might do well, uh, honestly. It might have cross appeal, you know, print and digital readers, but it's not going to sell. Well, it's good. if it sells at all, I mean, if it does sell, if they were going to do something, you'll probably get it, but similar numbers to what you were mentioning before. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So Daniel Cherry the III, uh, who said that our shared goals to create fun and compelling DC stories, all readers will enjoy and meet fans wherever they are. Um, yeah, but fans tend to stay where you find them. One possible key to 
Wayne Family Adventures popularity is it has an emphasis on the everyday lives of heroes. So everyday adventures. Everyday lives of heroes. I mean, like YouTube. They're they're doing this in Marvel comics, and it's kind of like it works in web comics, it works in graphic novels when the, the decompressed storytelling. Oh yeah, it doesn't work in print. Like, it doesn't these work in a twenty-two page no, comic. No, not like this. You'd have to have a graphic novel, and that's the problem. People, what was the episode where like it was it was like Spider Man making like baking pie or making something, and they're like, I don't care. Yeah, they've got dumbass stuff like that. They've got people sitting around coffee shops talking for, you know, 10 pages. Having so they could just what, clone the panel? Is that why? A lot of times they do, yeah. Yeah, like I'm just like, this is, you know, this I'm, doesn't work on a 22-page book. It would work in manga. It would work on web comics. It well, they're would work. bigger. Well, they're because they're bigger. They're bigger. Um, they're like more of a graphic novel. Yeah, they're larger. It's, it's decompressed storytelling. And, and a lot of these people, I think, you know, uh, working in comics right now, they want to be television writers or movie uh, you know, they want to work in movies and like on a TV show. Yeah, you have an hour long TV show. These superhero shows, they will pad these shows with 25 minutes of conversation, exposition, mm-hmm. chit chat, daily life stuff. And then, OK, we'll cram them in the super suit for the last five minutes of the mm-hmm. show. And whatever's expensive, keep it five minutes. Or five less, minutes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, stories wholesome and family friendly, and again, I'm not making I'm not making fun of it. We actually no, we're not said it looked pretty good. I'm just saying I, I, I'm trying to understand the reasoning behind it. Yep, um, it's easy for kids to jump in. This is in sharp contrast to the main Batman titles, which regularly features intense action and question question the ethics behind murder. Oh, please, whatever. Ultimately, analyzing the variables behind its success will require some time. No, it's free. It's free, mm-hmm. and it was promoted to everybody using the app. And it's done in a manga style. It really is that simple. It is. It really is. And, um, and, and given that many users they have now, 500,000 subscribers, you know, I would, that's not really that great. Yeah. So what we'll see, I, I mean, this might actually, like I said, hurt DC Comics because, you know, it depends on what the cost to produce these are. But if they're like, okay, if we're really concerned about just selling merchandise with DC Comics characters, lunch boxes, and mm-hmm. junk like that, right? Action figures. Uh, do we really need to be paying these obscene page rates to creators and have like 40 different titles? Because most of those titles, like really all it sells for us, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Aquaman now, you know, because they're movies. Well, that's what I'm saying. They're more worried about the movies and Teen stuff Titans, like that. Yeah. you know, that sells for us. So do we have to spend all this money and have all this hassle creating all these comics for a shrinking direct market? Or do we just have like four or five webtoons for our comics and we just reprint the old stuff endlessly, you know, and then we still sell just as much Harley Quinn merch, mm-hmm. you know, as we work, because we'll do a Harley Quinn and Ivy comic or something we'll too. We'll spin off new stories in the movies yeah. or whatever. Because the people that are buying that stuff are probably just watching the cartoon shows and stuff. So what's the point? You know, I, and I gotta wonder, I gotta wonder with, you know, this merger happening, they're gonna be looking for a way to cut costs. They're already laying people off. Oh, I'm sure. You know, so it might not, it might not help their case. I don't know. We'll find out, but maybe they'll, we'll see how, we'll, we'll have to watch how many subscribers they get over the next couple of weeks or months or whatever, but. Yeah. So anyway, we're gonna wrap this one up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.